Welcome to another Facebook Live with me, Marcus Fernandez. And today we're going to talk about teething the top seven homeopathic remedies. Now, so teething, some babies are born with their first teeth. Others start teething before they're four, four months old and some after 12 months. I know when I was a baby, my mom said I was running around with a head full of hair and uh, I had no teeth. I just had this big gummy smile. Um, so so, so all, some babies are different. Uh, some start teething at four months, some at 12 months. But most babies start teething around six months. And, and baby teeth sometimes emerge with no pain, as I said, or no discomfort at all. Some kids are fine with it, but some kids aren't. Some babies and children, small children aren't. So some of the signs of the teething, often is the gum is sore and red when the tooth is coming through. They can have sometimes a mild temperature. They feel hot, so you might take the temperature to around 38 degrees. They have one flushed cheek here on one side or the other side or kind of a rash on the face that can be rubbing their ear pulling at their ear rubbing their ear dribbling more than usual that was a big keynote i know my kids they would dribble more than usual and the gnawing and chewing on things like trying to just chew on anything and the more fretful than usual and that's one of the bigger signs they're not themselves they're out of sorts and they're not sleeping very well so they can be quite a little bit irritable grumpy they can't settle you know there's something going on there so some tips for helping teething is people use teething rings, uh, which the, people, the babies consume with their gums safely. Um, often they can be cooled in the fridge, which may really help soothe the gums, especially if they're better for cold. And we'll see some remedies are better for cold, some remedies are better for warm. And never put a teething ring in the freezer as it could damage your baby's gums if it gets frozen. So you've got to be careful like, if it's if too frozen. So just cool, which will give relief for it. Um, other signs of teething, as I say, is they're starting to chew in their fingers or their toys, anything they get hold of in the mouth and they're trying to chew on it with their gums. So if your baby is six months or older, you can give them healthy things to chew on, such as raw fruit, vegetables, soft fruit like melon can soothe the gums. Also try to give them a bit of crusty bread or a breadstick so they can gnaw on it. But always watch, obviously, when the baby's eating in case they choke. Uh, and Or a cold spoon, put a cold spoon, a metal spoon in the fridge. Well, 15 minutes and let them chew on that as well. Or you can also rub your fingers on the gums and often that can, can bring relief as well. So what are the order of the teeth coming through? Now, this is a really interesting thing to know if you don't know. Um, so this is a sort of a rough guide. So often the bottom incisors, the bottom front, front teeth, <coughs> excuse me, they come first, uh, are usually around five to seven months. Then the top incisors, the top front teeth, tend to come through at six to eight months. The top lateral incisors, which is either side of the top teeth, these come through around 9 to 11 months. The bottom lateral incisors, which is either side of the bottom teeth, they come through 10 to 12 uh, months. First molars, the back teeth, come through around 12 to 16 months. The canines, they come through around six to 16 to 20 months. The second molars, these come through around 20 to 30 months. And most children have all their milk teeth by the time they're two and a half years old. So normally they've all come in uh, at that point. But again, you know, kids can be different. So some kids we'll talk about will have delayed, delayed teething. Uh, some kids will be fine with it as well. And some kids just go back regular as clockwork and they come at the right time. So let's look at some homeopathic remedies. Now, this again, this is not going to be in any particular order, okay? And, and you'll see why in a minute. It's, 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 uh, it just follow a sequence. So the first remedy you think of, um, you can think of, especially is belladonna, where there's heat and redness of the gums and intense pain in teething. Now, both cheeks can be red, dry, and burning hot. Now, remember this with belladonna in the other videos you looked at. It's always that dread, dry, burning heat, hot. It can feel like it radiates from the child. Often the fever can have a fever, a high fever, when they have glassy eyes and dilated pupils, but they don't have a thirst. So you'll want to give them a drink, but they don't want to, they don't want to drink. And this is they, these pains suddenly come very fast, very intense, very sudden pains, especially when they're cutting the lower teeth. And often with belladonna, it can be worse on the right side, but I would say, you know, you don't, you, that's something that can confirm the remedy. But I would say you don't necessarily need to have that. They're very sensitive to touch. All senses are acute. Okay. So the whole thing with Belladonna is all their senses are really, really acute. They're worse at night, worse for eating, 
Worst touch, worst jarring. That's a real keynote for Belladonna. Jarring if they, suddenly, uh, if they suddenly move suddenly. Better biting on something. So they feel better biting on something. But again, that can be a common symptom with uh, teething children. So you're looking at some of those keynotes. As we talked about keynotes, if you had to play a song and you play three keys, you would recognize that song, three notes, and you recognize the same, same with homeopathy. So heat, redness, intense pain, red, dry, burning, hot, can have a fever often without thirst, fast, intense, sudden symptoms, but also they can go just as quickly. So remember, Belladon's like a storm. It comes in quickly and can, can go out just as quick. Okay, so it can just suddenly come, come on. So that's Belladonna. The next remedy, probably the number one remedy for teething, I'm sure you've, you've used this if you've ever prescribed for people, is chamomilla. Okay, so chamomilla, and here's this picture, is a perfect chamomilla child picture. So chamomilla, very highly emotional, very oversensitive, temperamental, irritable, nothing pleases them. The pain is unendurable, intolerable, and they become very angry with the pain. They toss about, they, they, they don't know what they want. You give them something, they, they don't want it, they want that, then they don't want it. They can throw themselves on the floor. Like I said, they ask for something, then they throw it away. Really frustrating having a chamomilla baby or teething because it, it, they're just so, it, just, you can't, can't do anything for them. Um, with chamomilla, one cheek is red, the other cheek can be pale. So wherever the tooth is coming through, that cheek will be red. The others pale. You'll see. You'll see them. It's a, quite a contrast. And often with chamomilla, they can have diarrhea. Again, some children will have earaches, diarrhea with their with their um, teething. I think it's part of the process, personally, because it's about transition. When you're cutting your teeth, it's a transition. It's an impo it's an important transition point of a transition for the child and part of their development. But with the diarrhea, with chamomilla, it can look green. It, it can look like grass, green grass, or it can look like chops, chopped eggs and spinach, like it's got little flecks of spinach in it. And it can also smell of eggs as well. It can smell a bit sulfury. Um, but that's a common thing with chamomilla. Better for being carried. But with chamomilla, better for being carried fast. They want you to move fast. Not like this slow business, they want to move fast with them. Or they like to be rocked, you know, quite vigorously rocked. So it soothes them, it soothes the nervous system. Again, the whole system, whole nervous system is on edge. Better for cold applications, so better for anything cold onto those gums. Better for, as we said about a, a teething ring or something that's cold, a cold spoon, they feel better for that, there's relief. Worse for being touched. Worse for being looked at. So you can just look at a chamomilla child and they're like, ah, start screaming because you're looking at them. Um, so often worse at 9 p.m., 9 p.m. to midnight. That's the worst time often they be. Uh, they, they can be aggravated or the teething can be worse. Worse being cold, like physically cold. Uh, worse for warm drinks. So better for cold, worse for any warm drinks if they have warm drinks. But they are thirsty for cold drinks, okay? Now with chamomilla, as I said, you'll often find the parents are at their wits end because the child is driving them insane. They don't, there's nothing that will help them and they don't know what to do. They feel very sort of like that they feel helpless, the, the, the parents, because like I said, you try to help the child, give it something what they want, but they don't want it, throw it away. This is chamomilla, very angry, very oversensitive, um, tosses about, don't know what they want. Um, they, uh, like I said, one cheek red with the pale and can have diarrhea, worse 9 p.m. to midnight. But so this is one of the number one remedies for chamomilla. And the thing with, you give the remedy like this, honestly, within, I've seen it within seconds or within a minute, the child, just, the whole system just calms down and they can calm down. And often with children, particularly, you give them a homeopathic remedy, they all often fall asleep. And this is a good sign. This is showing that they're healing. This is a really good sign when they fall asleep. So you've got to have your chamomilla. And in fact, you can buy things called teething granules a lot of the time over the counter, health food stores. Uh, and often teething granules, what they contain is chamomilla. Okay. But there is other remedies. So it's not the only remedy. So if chamomilla doesn't work, there is other remedies. 
Next remedy, calc car. Now, this is a good remedy for children with slow or difficult teething, where the teeth aren't coming through or they're very slow. And generally with calc carb, they, 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 everything's quite slow. So even their development, they're, they're slow to walk, to talk, in, in, including their teething. They can make chewing motions and press the gums together. You see them pressing them together, again, just to give some kind of relief. And they're often quite shy as, as babies, quite reserved in new situations. And often will play quite independently without any fuss. You know, they'll be, they'll be doing things, but they don't need anybody else. But they can sweat easily, particularly on the back of their head. So a cow car baby, you get them up in the night and they're all soaking wet on the back of their head here. It can leave the pillow quite wet, but there's a sour smell. Okay, there's a real sour smell with cow car. So again, they could be teething, they could be sweating quite a lot, and they, uh, it'll be a sour smell. Often as well, the cow car will have nightmares around the teething or night terrors. And you know the difference between a terror and a nightmare. Nightmares can they can be really upset, but with a terror, they are in they're in fright, they're in terror. And often cow car babies as constitutions can go into things like belladonna or pulsatilla as well. That can be the acute. Now, as you can see uh, with, with this picture, this is a really cow car baby, quite chunky, solid, have a big appetite. They love dairy, but again, they can have. Real, they can have diarrhea, a bit like chamomilla, but this is now more sour smelling when they're teething. Doesn't look like chopped eggs or spinach, just very sour, this sour smell of the diarrhea. They can be worse open air, worse milk, digesting milk, they can throw it back up again, worse any hot food, better for, for cold drinks, okay? And they can have, again, thirst for cold drinks. You can give chamomilla, so you can give chamomilla, and this is a really good tip. So you can give chamomilla every time they teeth and it really helps, but every time they teeth, they still have a problem and you have to give chamomilla again. Well, sometimes it's good to give them a dose of calc carb as a chronic remedy, okay? So if the chamomilla keeps coming, teething keeps coming up, after every time they cut a teeth, they go into a chamomilla state, they may need a deeper acting remedy like calc carb, a couple of doses of, a, say, a 30C, and you'll find they won't go into the chamomilla state again. So this is a, that's a really good tip to know. Next remedy, another calc, calc phos. So remember calc phos, calc carb, the, the, this is calcium, okay? Cal, uh, 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 this is a calcium element to it. And calc phos, and again, this is a really good picture of a calc phos. So this is a good remedy for development, again, in children and bones and teeth, the remedy calc phos. Now you can, you can buy calc phos uh, as a tissue salt or a cell salt, or give it in a homeopathic remedy uh, uh, potency. But it's really good for the bones and the teeth. This is really good for young children, babies, but also for teenagers. It's great remedy for teenagers. Again, any form of development is it, it, is when they're growing, like I said, the, the, the body's growing. Calphos is a really good uh, remedy for that. But again, this is good for slow and difficult teething, or where teething that's delayed. And the issue that calphos is, it's like they quite haven't quite, quite got the vitality to push the teeth through the gums. Okay. But it's also a good remedy for teeth that decay early in children. So often if they decay early, the good remedy to take is calphos. Now with calphos, they can have swollen glands. And again, they can sweat at the back of the head. That's a cal 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 calcarea element to them. And it also sweat on the face. But often the glands can be swollen with calphos. And they want to be nursed all the time. And they cry a lot. And they moan a lot. And they moan in the sleep as well with calphos. So this want to be nursed all the time, but they will still moan and cry. And again, they have an intolerance of milk, even mother's milk. But the thing about calphos is they have poor assimilation. They can't assimilate any nutrients. So they can look quite thin, can look quite undernourished. Opposite to calc carb, where they're quite stocky and they've got a really good appetite and they really do like their food. So that's the difference with calphos. So it's a little tip when they get to teenagers, calphos, it's good for... Osgood Slatter's disease or growing pains, but also great for teenagers because they get bored easily. They always say I'm bored, I'm bored, but that's, that's for teenagers. We'll do that on another session. But great remedy for teething. Next remedy is MagFos. So MagFos, again, this, it can be a cell salt or you can give it in homeopathic potency. So this is like chamomilla, hypersensitive to pain. They'll be shouting and screaming with the pain because they're, they're so in pain. Very restless. A lot of nervousness with weeping and, so and sobbing. 
despair and anxiety as well. They're very anxious with the pain and they get a fear of being touched. They don't want you anywhere near them. But the thing about the pain is it absolutely exhausts them. So they're exhausted with the pain. Okay, absolutely exhausted with the pain. The better for heat, better for warmth. Now, this is the keynote for MAGFOSS. Better for heat, better for warmth, better for hot, warm applications. Better for hard pressure. So you'll see them really biting onto something or even your finger are really biting them because it's better for hard pressure. And better if you rub the gums. They, they feel better for rubbing. Worse cold. Now, this is a big, uh, big uh, sort of keynote again the worst for any cold worst for cold water again opposite to being better for heat this is how you differentiate between them uh worse at night worse light touch they, they get irritable by what hard is so they press it hard or they press down hard they're better for worse for any motion so they like being be, be, they don't like being carried around worse for cold air but again little tip if chamomilla doesn't work try this remedy Go on to MAGFOS. These are very high energy states and again, very high sensitive to pain. It's, you can also, some people often say, uh, put this in uh, warm water, the remedy, and, there's, and let the child sort of drink a little bit of it. Um, the, people, some homeopaths say it's better in warm water. It works if you give it as a remedy or in warm water, but a really good remedy to know. We couldn't mention teething without this remedy, pulsatilla. Okay, now... Pulsatilla can often have teething, but also with a bland, yellowy, green nasal discharge. So they're streaming it every time they teeth, they've got this bland, nasal, greeny, yellow discharge. And they're very weepy. Typical picture of Pulsatilla. Very weepy, very tearful, very clingy, whinging and whining. And they want to be held. So again, you can see this child here. It doesn't look in a particularly great mood, but it's being held and it's being carried. But the opposite to chamomilla, where chamomilla wants to be carried quite fast and move quite vigorously, pulsatilla wants to be carried slowly. Okay, but they want this one to be carried everywhere. You can't put them down. As soon as you put them down, they'll look at you and the lip will go, don't abandon me. Those eyes, the tears will come. It's like you've abandoned them. They feel forsaken feel forsaken so you pick them back up again and you want to pick them back up and you just want to hug them and hold them because they, they look so forlorn but it's the opposite of chamomile with chamomile it's like take this child away from me now and <laughs> and i need a break pulsella you want to look after them you want to hug them uh, you know, and they feel better for that very thirstless so they, they, they don't they don't want anything to drink worse for stuffy rooms keynote of pulsella Worse twilight or after sunset, it makes the, the, the teething can be worse or the pain can be worse or they can be worse than themselves and worse heat of the bed. Better for open air, better for cold applications, again in the mouth or you might want to put some on the head. Um, better slow motion, just being carried gently around. Very going to be very gentle with pulsatilla. Remember, pulsatilla is a windflower, very delicate, wants to be looked after. Better for being carried, better for consolation. So they are better for being consoled. It's a big keynote for the pulsatilla baby. Complete opposite, as we said, to chamomilla. But a calcarb child can go into a pulsatilla state. Calcarb can go, obviously, into a belladonna state, as I mentioned previously. So the last remedy I'm talking about is ABC. This is a combination remedy. So it's a combination of aconite, belladonna, chamomilla. So this is really good for sudden intense teething pains where there's no clear picture. You may be thinking, I don't know what to give. It looks like it looks like chamomilla, it looks like magfoss. Actually, it's got a bit of feel, it looks like belladonna, and you don't know what to give. Then you can get this combination from the homeopathic pharmacies or from the health food stores, and then they sell it now. It's called the A, it's called ABC. And you can give this is sort of like the middle of the night scenario. You're in the middle of the night, you don't know what to give, which remedy, give them a dose of ABC. And you'll find it really, really helps. And once the pain has subsided, you get a clear remedy of which picture to now give. So you may give them the, this ABC, the screaming, the crying, the top of the voice, you're waking up, you don't know what to give. You give them ABC and they calm right down and then they just want to be cuddled. And then this, and they may start with this like, discharge that's coming out of the nose, green and yellow. What remedy? Pulsatilla then would give them Pulsatilla. 
So it's just a really good middle of the night remedy. Have it with you when, when, when to give it. We mentioned this when we did earaches. It's a great remedy for those scenarios. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was useful. Talk to you those seven top remedies. So we talked about De uh, belladonna. We talked about chamomilla, kelp carb, kelp foss. We talked about um, pulsatilla. We talked about magfoss and we talked about ABC. So as I always say, use these remedies, try them out. People ask what potency. I'd say, again, 6C, which you can get over the counter of the remedy or 30C. You often find 30 C's will work just as well as 6 C's. It's about getting the right remedy. And you can give it, you know, every hour, every couple of hours for three or four doses until they, they're they better. And you'll know when they've shifted. You know when they're better. Again, look out for uh, when they will fall asleep. And often they fall asleep, they wake up and they're in a lot better mood. And often things have shifted on. Remember, the remedy is like keys to a lock. The stimulating the vital force, we, as we say in homeopathy, or the prana of Ayurveda, or the chi of Chinese medicine. All that healing wisdom is within within us. But sometimes the body just needs a little push, a little like, key, just to, just to stimulate it, and it knows what to do. It knows what to do. So look out for those keynotes, those characteristic symptoms. As I always say, you need a three-legged stool, some three major keynote characteristic symptoms in order to prescribe. And you should see the difference within a couple of hours if it's the right remedy. Okay? If it persists and, you know, you can't seem to shift it, I always say go and see a qualified practitioner because that will help. Sometimes you just can't see it. You can be so in it, especially if you sleep deprived, you've got you know, lack of sleep and you can't think properly, then often you need somebody else's opinion in order to what to give. Or as I mentioned before, sometimes you need to give a more chronic remedy because it's maybe to do with their sort of predisposition and their constitution that we need to we need to strengthen and that might need more chronic treatment because here we're just dealing with things for home prescribing, things that you can do in the home. So again, try it out, tell about friends or family, anybody you know, if they're in children are teething, having issues with teething, then suggest the remedies. I mentioned them in my home prescriber book as well, but we have mentioned some more today, so I'll give you some extra. And as usual, the PowerPoint is here to download as a PDF for you to have, uh, so learn them. But if you've been watching these videos, and I say to everybody who's on YouTube to watch the videos as well, go back to the other videos, and you'll see some of these remedies appear again and again and again. They have so many uses. This is why we call them polycrest remedies. Uh, they have many uses. They have acute, acute uses, chronic uses. But what you'll find, they have these, these characteristic symptoms that runs all the way through the remedy. So what could be good for hay fever can be just as the remedy can be good for teething or it could be coughs and colds or it could be good for earache. So when you learn, learn these remedies, it's like learning songs. And I say to you, Ori, learn them like a song. They've all got their song. They've all got their, their me own melody. And that's what you're learning. You learn the melody of these remedies. So please do use them and go out there. And uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll have great success. And the more that you share this and people start using it and they see it working, then the more that they'll use it themselves. So just try it. Just try it. So I hope you enjoyed that. And thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you on the 8th of August when we'll do homeopathy for holidays. All right, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.